The Bible has many mentions of people who are paralyzed. Early in the ministry of Jesus, news spread about his healing powers as far as Syria. And that's far if you think about it. People came from everywhere, all over the region to be healed from demon possession, seizures, severe pain, and yes, paralysis. They left their homes for who knows how long to travel under very difficult traveling circumstances, not to mention their illnesses, just to get to where Jesus was. Caring for people with physical needs has always been a daunting task. Sometimes it results in a family being unable, unwilling, or inadequate to care for that person any longer. There's many ramifications to being healed, much more than meets the eye. There were, and still are today, huge financial and psychological costs to the incapacitated, but also their caregivers, which oftentimes are family members. And when care drags on for a long time, say a lifetime, there can be catastrophic damage to the individual and to their families. Agonizing screams night after night, medical costs day after day, the focus, the intensity, it's unending. So many marriages and families crumble. And home, it's destroyed. In the Gospel of John, Jesus arrives in Jerusalem to attend a festival, and he walks near the Sheep Gate on the north side of the temple. Near the Sheep Gate is a pool of water whose ruins will still exist 2,000 years later. The name of this glorious pool, Bethesda. The pool of Bethesda is believed to have healing powers, and due to the pool's reputation of healing powers, many incapacitated people, I mean, people who are blind, people who are lame, people who are diseased, paralyzed, stay there, live there, in hopes of being healed. But there's a catch. When the waters stir, only the first one getting in will be healed. One of those people living there has been an invalid for 38 years. <laughs> Jesus sees him lying there and hears about his long-term condition and asks, do you want to get well? I mean, what would you have answered to such a question? A simple yes? A yes with profanity or sarcasm added to it? Maybe just a stare or I mean, it's a foolish question. Perhaps not answer at all, because you've given up all hope. This man deflects the question. Nobody helped me get in the water when it stirred, so somebody always gets in before me. Okay, fine. But he dodges the question. He never says he wants to get well. What does Jesus do? Look around at all the people there that want to be healed? Look at the apostles and See what they think he should do? Stare back at the man? John records only this response. Jesus told him to get up, pick up his mat, and walk. And as he did this, the man was healed. 38 years, lying there helpless, and then picking up his mat and walking away. Here's one with a twist. As Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him and asked Jesus to heal a servant of his who was paralyzed. Jesus healed the servant. The twist, the centurion had traveled to meet Jesus, but the servant was still at the centurion's house, nowhere near Jesus, and he still was healed. And I saved the best for last. This story is told in the three gospels written by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. According to Matthew, the next story begins when Jesus returns to Capernaum after healing two demon-possessed people. And Matthew says, some men brought a paralyzed man laying on a mat. And Mark adds that when Jesus arrives in Capernaum, many of the people have heard that he has come home. So hoping to be healed, they gather in such large numbers that there's no room left, even outside the door of the house. And Mark says that the four men carry the paralyzed man to Jesus. 
The original Greek language gives no hint that any of them were relatives of the man, which would likely be the case. Perhaps his long-term condition has sapped his family support to its end, and they've abandoned him. A very common and heartbreaking scenario. This would mean that he had no family and no home, but depended solely on the charity of others. And Mark writes that since the men cannot get to Jesus because of the crowd, they make an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it, and they lower the mat he's lying. Luke adds that the Pharisees and teachers of the law are inside listening to Jesus teach. And people have come from every village in Galilee and from Judea and from Jerusalem. Luke doesn't say how many there are, but they surely fill the small house and overflow outside. And as the four men lower him through the hole in the roof they made, Jesus is impressed by their faith. Friend, take heart. Your sins are forgiven healing from Jesus, not a blessing. That's what he wants, what anyone would want, what I want. The Pharisees and teachers think that Jesus is committing the deadly crime of blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God, they think to themselves. Jesus knows this. And he asks, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, or rise up and walk. He waits, but no one answers. So that all of you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. And he turns and looks at me. I say to you, get up, take your mat, and go home. I get up, I take my mat, <laughs> And I go home, I glorify God. Everyone is amazed, filled with fear, saying we've never seen anything like this before. What do you think about the two miracles that happened to me that day? And there are indeed two miracles. The first was a man who was paralyzed, miraculously healed by Jesus. And obviously for that I am forever grateful and continually praise God. The second miracle, Jesus commanded me to go home. All three gospel writers say the same thing. Home. Jesus heals me, he restores my life, and he restores me to my family. Home. He tells me to go home. I get to go home.